we are the ministry of the real truth and while we were editing our latest video we've recently uploaded we came across further writings claims of the Kabbalah Dinandata corrected, translated into English, etc. And we're going to start from chapter 8 because there's something that we came across and realized, oh my goodness, it basically backed up what we had come across years ago, information-wise, in regards to religions. Chapter 8 Concerning the father and the mother in special, we're just going to go over this briefly. It's important that we do. 2.18 Come and behold, when the most holy ancient one, the concealed with all concealments, desired to be formed, forth he conformed all things under the form of male and female in such place, and in such place where in male and female are comprehended. 2.19 For they could not permanently exist save in another aspect of the male and the female, their countenances being joined together. 2.20 And this wisdom embracing all things, when it goes forth, will go forth and shine forth from the most holy ancient one, shineth not save under the form of male and female. 2.21 Therefore is this wisdom extended, and it is found that it equally becometh male and female. 2.22 Chokma ab baina am there's, there's no vowels there, but we just read straight to what it actually reads as. Chokma is the father, and Baina is the mother, and therefore in uh, Chokma, wisdom, and Baina, understanding, counterbalance together the most perfect equality of male and female. And down here, because it has a footnote indication here, by Chokma, Chokma is the second, and Baina is the third of the Sephiroth. This section is a sufficient condemnation of all those who wish to make out that woman is inferior to man. Okay, man is the head of woman, woman is the head of the family, meaning that overall he, because Adam, uh, Eve sinned first, then Adam, so he was given that authority. He was the head. Over the woman, right? But they're co-equal. Yeah? As partners, as mates. Eve is a helpmate. Or the woman is a helpmate. Or a helper. Okay? Etc. A companion. So, you should, basically what it's saying here, condemnation to you who think, who make out that woman is inferior to you. As a man. She's not. According to this Kabbalah. translated okay equality of male and female for were it not so how could they subsist okay. 223 and therefore are all things established in the equality of male and female for if it were not so how could they subsist how could they get along okay. how could they come together be man and woman, husband and wife, etc. 224. This beginning is the father of all things, the father of all fathers, and both are mutually bound together, and the one path shineth into the other. Chokma, wisdom, as a father, by now understanding as a mother. And it also probably talks about this concept as well. How can it subsist one without the other? 225. It is written, Proverbs 2 3. If thou callest by now the mother, 226. When they are associated together, they generate and are expanded in truth. 227. In the teaching of the school of Rav Ye Yeva, the elder, it is thus taught. What is by now the mother of understanding? Truly, when they are mutually associated together. 228. Assuredly, Yod, I impregnateth the letter He. H. And produceth a son, and she herself bring, bringeth him forth. Is a footnote indicated there? 
for Chokma and Bina in the Sephiroth answer unto I and H in the name I H V H or Jehovah, as has already been shown, has been already shown in the introduction of this book. And these bring forth Micro Prosopis, the Sun, the letter Val or Vav, V, answering a numerical value to the number six and to the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth Sephiroth. Go from two twenty eight again. Ah, oh, there it is. There, okay. Assuredly, assuredly, Yod, I impregnateth the letter He H and produceth a son, and she herself bringeth him forth. Two twenty nine, and therefore it is called B I N H as if or Bina, as if it were a transposition of B N I H Bin Ya, son of I H I, or I Yod H He. And be in the sun. 230. But they both are found to be the perfection of all things when they are associated together. And when the sun is in them, the syntagma of all things findeth place. 231. For in their confirmations are they found to be the perfection of all things father and mother and son and daughter. 232. These things have not been revealed save unto the holy superiors who have entered therein and departed therefrom and have known the paths of the most holy God. May he be blessed. So that they have not erred or made a mistake in them either on the right hand or on the left. 233. For thus it is written, Hosea 14.9 The paths of Tetragrammaton are true and the just shall walk in them. And so forth. 235. For these things are concealed, and the holy highest ones shine in them, like as light proceedeth from the shining of a lantern. 236. These things are not revealed, save unto those who have entered therein and departed therefrom. For as for him who hath not entered therein and departed therefrom, better were it for him that he had never been born. 237. For it hath been manifested, or revealed, or brought to light, before the most holy ancient one, the concealed with all concealments because these things have shone into mine heart in the perfection of the love and fear of the most holy God may he be blessed and oh, 2 3, 8, and these my sons who are here at present know these things for into these matters have they entered and therefrom have they departed but neither yet into all the secrets of them footnote indicator down the bottom here this clause refers to the unwritten Kabbalah okay, that's the oral the one that was never written down until a certain rabbi or whoever uh, decided to write it down. Two thirty nine. But now are these things illustrated in their perfection, even as it was necessary? Blessed be my portion with them in this world. Rabbi Shkimion, Shkimion said. All which I have said concerning the most holy ancient one, and all which I have said concerning Microprosopus, are all one. All are one. All are HVA. Who are himself all are unity. Neither herein hath separation place. 241. Blessed be HVA, or who are and blessed be his name unto the ages of the ages. 242. Come, behold, or look. Take note. This beginning, which is called Father, footnote indicated there, Chokma, the second Sephira, which, however, is as it were the repetition of Ketha, is comprehended. Okay, it's understandable, understood. In I, Yod, another footnote indicated, that is the letter I, Yod, in I H V H, which is said in the book of Concealed Mystery to symbolize. Macro prosopis only in its highest point. Okay, so come behold, take note. This beginning, which is called Father, is comprehended or fully understood in I, Yod, which dependeth from the holy influence. And it 
continues footnotes okay even more information this is Psalms 54 verse 24 perhaps all things in Chokmah hast thou made 258 in his place he is not manifested or not revealed neither is he known when he is associated with the mother B-A-M-A B-A-M-A then he is he made known otherwise symbolized in the mother B-A-M-A or B-A-M-A 259 and therefore is A-M-A known to be the consummation of all things and she is signified to be the beginning and the end 260 for all things are called Chokmah and therein are all things concealed and the syntagma of all things is a holy name 261. Thus far have we mystically described that which we have not said on all the other days, but now are the aspects shown forth. 262. As to the sacred name IHVH, I, Yod, is included in this Chokma, Wisdom, H, He, is Ima, and is called Bina, Understanding, VH, Val, or Vav, He, are those two children who are produced from Ima, the mother. 263. Also, we have learned that the name Bina comprehended all things, it understands all things. Okay. For in her is I, Yod, which is associated with Ima, or the letter H, He, and together they produce BN, Ben, the sun. Okay, here's a footnote uh, explanation here. Be Ama, with the mother. Here Ama, A M A, mother equals 42. Be, be Ima, and the mother. Here Ima, a I M A equal fifty two. B N Ben Sun. This gematria is most important because B it noted Ima A I M A is the letter I Yod, which we have just been told represents Chokma, joined to Ama, mother, which is Bina B I N H, which again is B N uh, space I H by metathesis Ben Yod He. For example, son of I He. Eternally conjoined in Bria. Okay, let's go back here. Just going to miss something. Okay, so also we have learned that the name. Bina comprehendeth all things. For in her I is I, Yod, which is associated with Ima, or the letter H, He, and together they produce BN, Ben, the son, and this is the word Bina, father and mother, who are I, Yod, and H, He, which with whom are interwoven the letters B, Beth, and N, Nun, which are BN, Ben, and thus far regarding Bina, 264. Also she is called Thebuna, the special intelligence. Wherefore is she sometimes called Thabuna and not Bina? And so forth. Much more here. Some references to Leviticus 15 or 16 and uh, 30 and 2510. Okay, and more here, more explanation. Continues. Aha, okay, so we're going to start. Somewhere down here. And when all things are comprehended or understood, fully understood, they are comprehended therein and are called by that name of Father, Mother and Son. 294. And these are Chokma, Wisdom, Father, Bina, Understanding, Mother and Doth, Da'ath, Knowledge. And here's a footnote indicated here. The indication here the number answering to the 50 gates of Boina see book of concealed mystery chapter 1 series 46 or section sorry section 46 295 since that son assumeth the symbols of his father and of his mother and is called Doeth or Darth 
knowledge since he is the testimony of them both. 296, and that son is called the firstborn, as it is written, Exodus 4.22, Israel is my firstborn son. So there it's talking about that nation, okay, in that sense. And since he is called firstborn, therefore it implieth a dual offspring. And when he increases in his crown, appear three divisions. Okay, uh, compare with this the alchemical symbolism of Duinic, the king of earth, after being overwhelmed by the waters, rising again glorified and crowned with a triple crown of silver, iron, and gold. Chesed, Gubara, and Teferith is the alchemic Sephiroth of the metals. Okay, so after all that, we came across this 295. Since that sun, and there's a footnote indicator there, okay, and it says here, compare this with the Egyptian Horus, the son of Isis and Osiris. Also notice the interchange of symbols between Amen, Neth, because the K is silent, in the meaning there, the Egyptian language, and Kem, again, silent, so it would be him, or, yeah, him. The name of the great Egyptian god Amen, or Amun, is noticeable when we compare it with the Kabbalistic name A-M-N. Yeah, there's no vowel there. Yeah, so if you added a vowel, it would be Amun. Yeah, or Amen. Yeah. So we wrote a note on this. We're sitting back thinking about it. Okay, If that footnote is hinting that you should compare this with the Egyptian Horus, the son of Isis and Osiris. That's a uh, part of a triune, isn't it? Uh, in, in this sense, it would be biune, but if uh, there's three of them there, right? The son of Isis, which is Horus, and Osiris. Okay? So there's three of them there. So that's a triune. So if, if it's Dropping a hint of that, we put on our notes, just read from them, in regards to this at page 289. So looking at the footnote, we have come to the realisation that the Egyptians, possibly due to or through Akhenaten and his short-lived monotheism, had it right for a time, until his son was to sit on the throne in his place, because he had died, right? Or the condition by the peoples, or the high priests, or even the oracles of that era, who decided, because this is what the people wanted, to return to their prior pantheon, believing in many gods, with a little g. The people witnessing Moses' show of almighty God's power, when he went to the Pharaoh with Aaron and chucked down his staff and all that sort of stuff. Who, when he threw that staff down with that rod, it turned into a snake or a crocodile. Okay, it depends on where you get the information from. That gobbled up the Egyptian magicians, crocodiles or snakes because they used to... Uh, have pets behind their pyramids or something like that in the Nile or whatever, or a small pool and they should chuck like uh, meat at them and all this sort of stuff and you know um, tease them like that and probably did that to snakes as well. That's just what we've come across, the information we've come across over the last couple of years or so. Okay, so when his staff turned into a bigger snake or bigger crocodile and gobbled up their ones, the Egyptian magicians' ones. The people standing around realized a greater power. Okay? They realized Moses' God was more powerful because A, he throws the staff down, which is using as an example, a double example. They have two crocodiles come out, right? But he tucks his staff down and becomes this bigger crocodile which gobbles up the other two. Okay? Second time around, they probably do their magic and snakes come up, right? So maybe he throws his staff down and a big giant boa constrictor comes and chews up those little snakes, right? Okay. 
So the people realized a greater power, the power of Moses as God. So in awe, they thought, wow, it's more powerful than it, the gods that we have, these magicians' power, etc., etc. So stuff that we're going to convert to his God because he's more powerful. We've seen through this example. Okay? So these people, upon the Israelites finally leaving Egypt, were new converts who decided to go with them because there was a verification that Moses' God was more powerful. You're not going to stick around and worship the, I don't know, sandstone idols and all this sort of stuff, imaginary ones. Yeah, these pantheons of gods. As the book of Exodus states, through God, Moses was instructed that all of the house of Israel the Israelites be circumcised, they came under that covenant, right? To remain within that camp. And even foreigners they had these Egyptians, etc., amongst them. Okay? To remain in that camp, they had to come underneath this covenant, this agreement, and they had to get circumcised to remain there. So AMN or Amun, the great Egyptian god, is noticeable when the we compare it with the Kabbalistic Amun or AMN Amun. So the pagan religions, this is what I come to realise quite a while back, but this basically has, has verified it. So the pagan religions as we have or had come across information years ago, as we just stated, originally had the same monotheistic god ideologies perhaps even a triune or a trinity in which they defined or therefore, ex therefore explained it before uh, emphasis on before later disciples of their religion whatever that was or someone of that religion later on decided, nah, I don't like that they didn't like it that idea, but rather favoured a pantheon or multitudes of gods. Okay? And they created God after God after God to explain uh, why is the sky blue, why is the sea this, why, why is this, what's that, you know, whatever. Okay, an example is Hinduism with over 3,000 or more gods, etc. When centuries and centuries ago, they possibly had this one God, this triune God, right, this trinity, and they explained it in their way of explaining it, right? Their language wise, their culture wise, all that sort of stuff. Okay? But again, as we stressed before, somebody, a uh, uh, latter peoples to that religion probably said, oh no, we don't like that idea, let's change it. Okay? And they took on this pantheon, created this pantheon of many gods. Okay, so we now say to the claim scholars, i.e., Shaka Amos, etc., of Sa Neda TV fame on YouTube, you didn't pick up on this. And you never knew about this. That your ancestors were basically in agreement, Trinity wise, via Horus, Osiris, and Isis. Just three there, right? So it's triune. Three gods, right? Three divine beings. There are an interchange of symbols between Amen or Amun, Neph, and Him or Ham. And you are, or your ancestors, according to the Genesis lineage list in the Bible, were Semitic, descendants of a son of Noah. Ham, or Hem, so you are originally Semitic, of Semitic origin, not African originally, until these sons' descendants, or descendants of descendants, eventually migrated to the geographical location now known as Africa and merged with others a tribe who had migrated there earlier who were descendants of descendants of those original Hebrew Chaldean Semites your ancestors occupied Put, Mizraim or Egypt Canaan 
according to the book of Genesis descendants of Noah's son list Ham or Chem uh, sorry Ham or Hem because the K is silent in both the uh, Aramaic and the Egyptian Metuneta you have the same word in the original ancient very old Metuneta as that in the original ancient very old Hebrew Chaldean language of Abraham and his people who migrated to Canaan yeah? and they supposedly took on board your God El okay? because supposedly Abraham scripted it wrong it's supposed to be Il the name the one true name of the one true God was Il not El okay? which is the article the which is in the word Elohim which means the God with a capital G or the gods okay not necessarily meaning it's pagan okay it's just they had this probably had this concept that mm, we're not too sure on this one that the angels were actually gods I think there's a Gnostic teaching that say yeah yeah they were gods we don't believe that okay it's only one God okay then it's the trinity the triunity so it's not God saying let us to these angels create man in our image it's talking the Father to the Son to the Holy Spirit okay the triune so yeah this uh, just basically blew our mind when we realised hey this backed up what we thought years ago okay so hopefully this has woken you up to that okay and that we shouldn't be so harsh on these other religions the religions of the past and the religions of today only if they and you've got to prove this by doing your own personal research that originally they had a triune they had a trinity similar to what the Christians have okay the ancient civilizations like uh, Mesopotamia the Assyrians etc the Hebrews the Chaldeans that and that somewhere along the way over the millenniums latter students or latter disciples of these religions decided no nah, no nah, we don't like that anymore it's boring whatever we don't like that uh, uh, we want a multitude or pantheon of gods and uh, this god did this and this god did that oh oh okay so um, this was created by this god and this is the reason why this happened because this god you know, and then ended up with like 3,000 to th uh, 30,000 gods uh, for example the uh, religion of Hinduism okay and then they were different colours and all this sort of stuff so in the ancient days when they had this possibly this one monotheistic god this but a triune right as a triune they explained it in their own way in their own language to their own culture so yeah it's making us realise even with people we have come across that are Muslim and their monotheism way back originally probably in the first thoughts of it maybe Muhammad right understood it that way but he couldn't really grasp it he got it from the Aramaeans the people of the book etc but he couldn't really grasp it he couldn't conceive or understand or grasp that yeah it's one God but it's monotheistic well, they're three as one but they're monotheistic this is what we found of late so again somewhere later on someone's messed with their religion and said no 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 no. there's only one God in the prophet Allah he hasn't got a equal co-equal there's no triune there's no trinity there's no sun all this sort of stuff as Judaism says but as we've just found through reviewing this Kabbalah unindicted the Son of God is mentioned throughout it so if you like this video give us a like add your comments underneath we'll be interested in the people who actually practice the Kabbalah who know really really well because we don't 
Okay, we're just going by what we've read, what we've reviewed. So if you could help us out nicely, you know, teach us something, you know. Show us. Okay, okay, this is what it means. This is what it's saying, or this is what it means, etc., etc. Okay, we're open to that. We're not really open to people who go, oh, uh, uh, and get all nasty at us, you know. We don't want that. We're not about that, okay. Yeah, you know, just, yeah, because we don't know it as well as you do, at least give us a heads up, you know, help us out so we can fully understand it better. Yeah, so again, if you like this, give us a like, add your comments below this video, and don't forget to subscribe to us, it's very important, and then go share this video, the entire videos on the Kabbalah, and the data, uh, with your friends, family, and others, so they can have a fuller, better understanding of the different religions and their aspects, their concepts.